Hi there! If you saw my previous video, then uh, one thing that might have uh, struck you is the fact of that uh, both the active event handlers we created in my previous video was static. And that begs the question, is it possible to create an uh, active event handler for an object of an instance, where the active event handler is an instant method. And of course it is. Here I have uh, almost uh, the same application I had in my previous video. It's a console application. It loads the assembly called plugin, creates an application context. Then it raises the active event whose name is called foo. And then it retrieves the result of my active event invocation, which this time is expected to be a string. And then it writes that result to the console. So, before we execute this app, let's have a look at our plugin and how it looks like. Now here I have my class, which is almost roughly the same as previous, except it has one special active event handler, which is static, by the way, as you can see. Now its name is pf.core.init-context. That's a special active event being raised by the framework every single time I create a new application context through this line. So when I create a new application context, then an active event called pf.core.initContext context is being raised by the framework itself. This means that every single time a new application context is created, this piece of code is created. And what does this piece of code do? Well, it instantiates my class 2, an object of that type, and then it registers that instance as a listening object on my application context. If you have a look at my class 2, then you will see that it uh, basically contains an instance method, does not say static here, and its name is foo, and it returns the result of foo. So let's try to compile this. And then of course there are no dependencies between uh, plugin and main executable. Therefore, we need to go to the file system and physically copy and paste the plugin.dll to the directory of the main executable.exe. Paste, replace, and run. And as we expected, the result was foo. And this way you can, uh, by using the application context.register listening object, you can register and you can unregister instance objects which you want to have as uh, active event uh, handlers. And of course if I wanted to here I could have a uh, private int uh, foo value equals zero. And every time I invoke foo I could do plus foo value plus plus. Then I can go back to my program.cs and I can invoke foo twice, compile the thing, whoops, uh, actually we will need to do this slightly different. replace and run. And that didn't work. Uh, foo.
of course however now it should work and as you can see now I was capable of storing state inside of my um, active event handler because the first time I invoked the active event it says foo0 and the second time it says foo1 and if you have a look at the my class 2 here you see it increments the underscore foo value here every single time it is being invoked and this allowed me to maintain state inside of my method now comes the question um, which is um, kind of interesting which is if we create another project here so let's create a new project library call it plugin 2 click OK then let's uh, add a reference to um, phosphorus core let's uh, use the phosphorus core namespace and uh, just for clarity let's add up the copyright notice here at the top and then let's make this uh, a static active event handler inside of our my class here in plugin 2 active event name equals bar private static void bar And then let's return. So what happens now if we override foo from our plugin project here with the bar active event from our plugin two project here? Well, let's try. let's compile and of course this time we have to copy both plugin and plugin 2 to the output directory so let's go to plugin first copy let's go back paste replace then plugin 2 And of course, we will also have to explicitly load our second plugin project here before we run the project. Now, of course, foo is overridden with bar, which is in a completely different project. And plugin one does not know about anything except phosphorus core. Plugin two does not know about anything except phosphorus, phosphorus, uh, phosphorus core and system. And let's see if this works. And as you can see, it perfectly worked fine. Meaning I was capable from one project to override a method that exists in a completely different project. And my projects did not in any ways know about even the existence of each other whatsoever. There were no references between plugin and plugin 2 in my solution. And in fact, there's no reference from main executable either to neither of my plugin nor my plugin 2 projects. And in fact, the original active event, which I was overriding, was an instance active event handler or an instance method in a class registered as an active event uh, instance listener, while my overridden active event bar was a static active event handler in a completely different class in a completely different project and of course I could have completely turned it around if I wanted to I could have made this one an instance active event and the other one a static if I wanted to however that's an exercise I'll leave for you 
Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.